Why exactly gender-neutral pronouns are unacceptable? A warning. Hey, it's Prince of Queens, and I'm making this video because I realized that in my past two videos on the subject about why I disapprove of people who use gender-neutral pronouns, specifically the singular they, I wrote the videos with the intended audience being my subscribers. However, not everybody already thinks in a similar way to how my subscribers do, I must remember, and it is not best to exclusively preach to the choir. And so, due to prolonged arguing on Twitter that has come as a result of my video, or videos rather, I want to carefully examine in specific detail and careful wording why exactly I am opposed to gender-neutral pronouns. Now, in college, I majored in playwriting in the theater department and worked in theater all throughout my 20s and early 30s. In case you haven't done much theater, theater people talk a lot about subtext. And in case you are unfamiliar with that concept, subtext is what happens in writing, drama, or any type of personal interaction when somebody's words and actions means more than what they appear on the surface. Everyday statements from person to person have subtext not uncommonly. Often, these statements are referred to as passive-aggressive by some people. For example, if you were attending a book club and the person who headed the book club told you after a few meetings, this book club isn't for everybody, the subtext would be that they think that you should probably stop attending the book club, but they're not going to come right out and say it. It's a passive-aggressive statement, and the real statement is in the subtext. However, subtext is not confined to mere hints about people's opinions. Subtextual statements can actually mean a lot, many different things. I mean, by the time you finish a book like The Great Gatsby, you know that the author was trying to tell you something, but instead of just telling you what he wanted you to know, he showed it to you by presenting you with a story. That being said, I want to talk about gender-neutral pronouns and the people who demand to be called by gender-neutral pronouns and carefully examine the subtext of what is going on when this happens. The rest of this video is going to be about the subtext. To say my honest feelings without beating around the bush, when these people demand to first be referred to with gender-neutral pronouns, and then they inevitably go on to request that you ask every person you meet what their preferred pronouns are, these people are demanding that you doubt your own perception of reality. And that is unacceptable. Nobody has the right to make you doubt yourself in such a way. You see, it's not simply that one individual is demanding to be called they, them, or zzer when they are almost certainly somebody who does not present particularly androgynously. Rather, it's much more than that. When somebody that looks completely male or completely female tells you that they are neither male nor female, these individuals are telling you, in subtext, that gender is completely internally subjective to the individual, that gender has no correlation to how other people see him or her, that they are an example of this, and the evidence that he or her is providing you with is simply that you're supposed to take his or her word for it. And therefore, you need to always ask people what their gender is from that point onward at the beginning of every conversation according to him or her. The subtext here really is nothing less than an order when taken to its full conclusion, but few people bother to think it through. These people are ordering us around in several ways, starting first with how we speak to them, then eventually with how we speak to others, and then very often they'll try to influence how we speak and think entirely. 
It took me years to really realize how destructive this was, to be honest, and it took until I was put through it numerous times by numerous people that I knew once to be male or female who eventually decided one day to define as gender neutral. I always knew it was weird that they were doing this, and it made me feel like I was being ordered around, but I didn't know how to say why it made me feel that way. Undoubtedly, I assume almost everybody feels the way that I do. Here's the thing. People who trash talk SJWs and feminists aren't just making stuff up when we say things like, I don't appreciate being ordered around with pronoun demands from non-binary special snowflakes. It might be a slight exaggeration what they're saying about the non-binary special snowflakes ordering them around, but pragmatically, it mostly rings true. You see, when we say that we don't like being ordered around, we are not necessarily implying that they are literally little girls who look like this telling us in person, you better call me by they, them pronouns because I'm not a woman. Refer to me with the singular they. That's an order. I'm not necessarily saying that she actually does that, though I don't know that she doesn't do that exactly because uh, she does tell her customers not to call her ma'am because she's supposedly not a woman. So it's not so outlandish to imagine that she actually does that type of thing. Still, the problem people like myself are having is not simply that we hate the singular they entirely, because it's true that everybody does use the singular they on occasion. I've even used it so far in this video. Rather, we are objecting to what happens when somebody tells you that he or she wants to be referred to exclusively with the singular they, and he or she also makes it explicitly clear that he or she will consider it a violation of your friendship if you don't refer to he or she exclusively as they when you are talking about them to another person. And that's where they are pushing it too far. We object when we are told that we are not allowed to ever refer to he or she as either he or she. That's where I draw the line and have no tolerance for these people, especially considering the fact that they are aware that you see them as a person with a binary gender. When it gets to that point, this person is not just commanding you in how to talk, but much worse. This person is literally attempting to begin controlling how you think, as hyperbolic as that sounds. Here's how they do it. First, this individual already chose to deny their own objective perception of reality by pretending that they truly are gender neutral when he or she knew once upon a time that he or she was male or female. Perhaps this person has fully convinced themselves that he or she is gender neutral, or perhaps it's a twisted pathological game for the person entirely. It's hard to tell. I speculate that a lot of the people who claim to have non-binary gender dysphoria are actually suffering from some combination of extremely low self-esteem, depression, anxiety, and maybe undiagnosed body dysphoria due to trauma-like abuse. But that's another topic for another video. Still, just for the sake of argument, We'll assume that these people have legitimately convinced themselves that it's okay to tell people that their penis or vagina is irrelevant, and we'll assume they've convinced themselves that the way people perceive them is irrelevant too, and we'll assume they've convinced themselves that they have no gender at all because they truly believe they are gender neutral in some way, even though they were told their whole lives that their biological sex was important, that it was determinant of their gender, and that they are either male or female, or were male, male or female, we'll assume that they truly believe. Fine. That's what we're working with. 
Next, after this person convinces themselves that his or her own confusion around his or her personal identity is something that deserves a new official label like non-binary, after that, this person started asking other people to refer to them with gender-neutral pronouns, usually the singular they, which is often grammatically incorrect and very often leads to all sorts of confusion when enacted because it's confusing when somebody refers to a single person with they, them pronouns because often people assume that somebody is talking about a group when they do that. It's confusing. Now keep in mind, this person knew the entire time that other people do not see them as gender neutral, which is why these people have YouTube blogs where it's some girl talking about having to actually come out as non-binary. It's also the reason why these people almost always seem to include their pronouns in their Twitter bios. These people know that they are asking something unnatural and ultimately unreasonable out of people, of course, but they choose to do it anyway. Some of these people try to be nice about it, and some of them are blatantly rude, and they act as if anybody who doesn't presume ahead of time that they define as gender neutral is like totally square cis scum. Regardless, in the drastic majority of cases, at least from my personal interactions with dozens of these people, and from observing how non-binary identified people behave on social media, when it comes to interacting with these people on a social level, even if they are super nice about it and say that it's just a pronoun preference and not a demand, these people will never be happy with you until you submit to his or her wishes and refer to him or her as they or them. Now, if you submit to this request from the individual, that's already bad enough in the way that you are going along with something that you don't truly believe in, which would be the notion that they have no gender at all. You know you don't see anybody as gender neutral. I mean, maybe you met one person one time where it legitimately seemed like they weren't male or female, but usually you haven't. Still, it's understandable why people go ahead and choose to use gender neutral pronouns for certain individuals just to avoid social awkwardness, especially if you're a young person on college campus and you know some people that want to be called by gender neutral pronouns, why not just be nice to them, right? But usually, with people who identify as gender neutral, it doesn't stop there. And here's how you know that they are attempting to control how you think, even if they don't realize it, and get you to think how they have been conditioned to think by others like them. Eventually, after he or she has convinced you to be fine with referring to he or she with the singular they and only the singular they, he or she will do his or her best to persuade you to always ask other people what their preferred pronouns are at the beginning of every conversation. Because, of course, if you were willing to pretend that you don't see your friend as the gender they present as and were probably born as, and you were willing to refer to he or she with the singular they, then that would imply that you are also willing to accept that you maybe don't know anybody's gender at all, right? If an obviously gendered person, like your friend, has no gender at all, maybe everybody has this potentiality, right? From that point onward, if you go along with it, you'll be expected by your non-binary identified friend not just to ask what gender somebody identifies as every time you meet a new person, but also your friend will expect you to start telling people your own gender identity at the beginning of conversations or on your Twitter bio, 
even if you are a cisgender man or woman that presents completely masculine or feminine. After you do that for a while, after you have been partially brainwashed by being forced to accept that you deserve to have to ask everybody which gender they identify as or lack of a gender they identify with, after you do that and you get used to asking everybody what their gender is every time you meet a new person and you're already going around telling everybody your own gender, even though you always felt that your own gender was apparent, after you do all of that, there will inevitably be somebody or other who will bring into question your own gender. They will make you question your own gender. You see... Somewhere down the line, if you've already taken these steps towards intersectional feminist, gender deconstructionist mind control, they'll start trying to get you to question your own gender and whether or not you want to be somebody that exists within the oppressive gender binary. They'll want you to come out of the closet as non-binary too, of course, eventually. Because why wouldn't they want you to? Your friend did it. And you know perfectly well that she's a girl, but you were willing to pretend otherwise. You were willing to ask all of her friends which gender they were every time you met one of her friends, and you were even willing to tell people your pronouns preemptively as if they didn't already know your gender when looking at you, even though you knew that they did. So, if you've already gone that far they're naturally going to be thinking that they might be able to convince you that you don't know your gender yourself, right? I mean, maybe you don't. Maybe you don't know anything about gender at all. Maybe gender is entirely a social construct like the feminists said. Oh God, this is so confusing. Don't you wish somebody had all of the answers? Don't worry, kiddo. Somebody will gladly tell you that they basically have all the answers, and it will likely be a sociology or gender studies professor. But of course, this person will just be following somebody else's orders in the way that your friend was. And where do these people get their orders? Where exactly are the orders coming from? Where indeed? Where, indeed.